What's up my gorgeous geeks, it's Cash in here with a brand new video and today I am doing a collab video with Anime Lover and we'll be reviewing My Hero Academia. <laughs> My Hero Academia. This is a series that is has been very popular lately. Um, the sixth volume finally just came out two days ago, I'm pretty sure now. Yeah, two days ago. And honestly, this is one of my personally, like personally, this is one of my favorite series at the moment. And it's so good. Um, you should go check it out. But with the manga series, um, it is like really good art and... Like, th that art quality. <laughs> but honestly though, it, like, it has really good art. The series was licensed for English language release by Viz Media. It was then added to their weekly digital manga, Weekly Shonen Jump, on February 9th, 2015. The anime's first season aired from April 3rd to June 26th, 2016, and a second season has actually been announced. So in a world of where 80% of the population is superheroes and they have superpowers and all that type of stuff, and 20% are normal humans, um, this boy named Izuku Midoriya um, is an absolute fanboy for superheroes, but sadly he is one of the unlucky ones to not have powers. His parents have powers, but he was born without them, so he kind of just fanboys, but he always had this dream that he wanted to be a hero because of his favorite hero named All Might. All Might is the strongest hero out of all the heroes, um, but after like meeting, um, after Midoriya meets All Might, um, he learns that there's a different story and different side to um, All Might that Midoriya never even knew. What's actually very unusual is that the weakest point in this show was found at the very end of the season. I found it to clearly keep things open for a second season, which I get, but at the same time, this open ending close to season one felt more unsatisfied than anything else. I felt like I was allowed to rip open the wrapping paper, but I wasn't able to open the box yet. Where MHA really succeeded was in their unique choice in characters. Even extras seemed to have their own personalities, and to be honest, this was the most impressive part of the show, which is the whole scope of it. All the teachers and students were very unique and strange in their own ways, which was amazing and very refreshing to actually see that. The only issue I had was that I didn't get to see enough of all the different personalities. There are people I really wanted to get to know, but they didn't gain enough screen time, and to me, that was incredibly irritating. So Midoriya is a normal school kid with all these other superheroes, and he wants to be a superhero, so he tries and signs up for this elite school called UA Academy, which is for superheroes. It's to make you become a superhero and it makes you powerful and strong and it's just number one school of them all. And he go he wants to sign up for the school really bad, but him having no powers, like it's not really a good chance like he has no real chance of making it until All Might, the strongest superhero, sees something in him and is like, I'm gonna give you the all for one. The all for one is um, a superpower that can be passed to another person. So it's almost like a relay race, like you pass on the baton. That's kind of what All For One is. And um, All Might was looking for a successor for this power and he saw something in Midoriya that he hadn't seen in anybody else. And so he chose Midoriya to have this power. The close-up animation was an absolute gem. The detail of the characters were amazing. I really loved the drawing style of the entire series. The only downside that I saw in the animation department was the quality of the action. It went down drastically due to either, I'd have to assume, budget cuts or shortcuts. Now, the sound effects actually were amazing to me at least. I enjoyed how all the different powers, however similar they may be with their elements, sounded different for each user. This was something that really pleased me greatly about the show. It's amazing to see the personality of the character 
taken into effect and their abilities aren't just copy and paste sound effects. They all seem to have their own sound effects based upon their personalities. Both subbed and dubbed VOs were very well done in terms of performance and clarity in the voices. I would have to say this is the MVP of the sound department. Now the soundtrack was amazing, but unfortunately my biggest gripe is that the music would just bleed over everything else. Instead of what should have been a symphony of sound where, you know, at some points the music would shine and then the voice acting would shine and then the sound effects would shine, it was just really unattractive when there were these muddy parts where the music would just overplay everything else. So Midoriya now has this power, but it's not as easy to wield as it would seem because it makes you the strongest person in the world, so it puts a lot of strain on your body, so Midoriya has to work for months and build up his muscle for days on end, and he just does these crazy workouts to try and be able to hold this power within him without blowing himself up. So even after months of training, he still will flick his finger and because of the force of the power of him f like flicking because it's so strong it'll break his finger and his finger will just be like a loose piece of jello like that's basically how it is so he can't really use his powers but it's come time that he has to go and take the test to see if he can make it into the ua school um high school and so he goes and um, how they marked it is there was the fighting portion, and then there was the secret portion, which was the hero portion. And Midoriya did very bad in the fighting portion for killing these huge robots, but when he saw um, a girl in need, he went in and saved her even though he broke both of his legs and his arm in the process because of his power was so strong and he wanted to go save her and using those powers, it was just like bleh broken. <laughs> Overall, I would have to say that it's definitely worth buying. This anime has every little aspect I look for in a buy anime, and that's mostly coming from the story. It really starts you off very well, and I mean, although the ending makes you feel unsatisfied, that's mainly due to the fact that there's gonna be a second season, and they leave you on a cliffhanger so that way you wait for the next season. Some recommendations I have, the obvious one being One Punch Man, probably the easiest recommendation I can make, as both shows are about superheroes, with the mix of serious fights and comic relief. The second recommendation will be Soul Eater. The plots are very similar as a young character goes to school to hone their supernatural abilities. Both have action-packed scenes and a mix of comedy relief. The last recommendation is going to be Tengen Topa Gurun Lagan. This is like the ultimate coming-to-age story with the main character gaining strength through the admiration of a character that they look up to. How I describe the series is, is kind of in a way like Naruto. Somebody starts out um, weak, wanting to be something, and it's the growth of this character as they become the thing that they wanted to be. It's a serious, humorous show, so they do have a lot of humor within the series, but then also it can get, get it can get very serious in like 2.2 seconds. But honestly, I recommend you go check it out. It is so good. Um, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, yeah. Alright. Bye, guys.